Kelly! Crawford wants to see you in his office. Thank you, sir. You looking for Crawford? Yes, sir. Well, he should be back in a couple minutes. Why don't you wait in his office? Okay. And then uh, I think they were over in the Russian. Sam. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Crawford. Sorry to pull you off the course at such short notice. Your instructors tell me you're doing well. Top quarter of your class. I hope so. They haven't posted any grades yet. A job's come up, and I thought about you. Not a job, really. More of an interesting errand. Sit down. Yes, sir. I remember you from my seminar at UVA. <laughs> You grilled me pretty hard, as I recall, on the Bureau's civil rights record in the Hoover years. I gave you an A. A minus, sir. Let's see, double major, psych and criminology, graduated magna, summer internships at the Reisinger Clinic. It says here, when you graduate, you want to come to work for me in behavioral science. Yes, very much, sir. Very much. We're interviewing all the serial killers now in custody for a psychobehavioral profile could be a real help in unsolved cases. Most of them have been happy to talk to us. You spook easily, Starling? Not yet, sir. See, the one we want most refuses to cooperate. I want you to go after him again today in the asylum. Who's the subject? The psychiatrist, Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal the cannibal. I don't expect him to talk to you. But I have to be able to say we tried. So if he won't cooperate, I want just straight reporting. How's he look? How's his cell look? Is he sketching, drawing? If he is, what's he sketching? Here's a uh, dossier on Lecter. Copy of our questionnaire and a special ID for you. I have your memo on my desk by 0800 Wednesday. OK. Um, excuse me, sir, but. Why the urgency? Lecter's been in prison for so many years now. Is there some connection between him and Buffalo Bill, maybe? I wish there were. I want your full attention, Starling. 
Yes, sir. Be very careful with Hannibal Lecter. Dr. Chilton at the asylum will go over all the physical procedures used with him. Do not deviate from them for any reason whatsoever. And you're to tell him nothing personal, Starling. Believe me, you don't want Hannibal Lecter inside your head. Just do your job, but never forget what he is. And what is that? Oh, he's a monster. Pure psychopath. So rare to capture one alive. From a research point of view, Lecter is our most prized asset. You know, we get a lot of detectives here, but I must say I can't ever remember one as attractive. Will you be in Baltimore overnight? Because this can be quite a fun town if you have the right guide. <laughs> well, I'm sure this is a great town, Dr. Chilton, but um, my instructions are to talk to Dr. Lecter and report back this afternoon. I see. Well, let's make this quick, then. We've tried to study him, of course, but he's much too sophisticated for the standard tests. Oh, my, does he hate us. Thinks I'm his nemesis. Crawford's very clever, isn't he, using you? What do you mean, sir? Pretty young woman to turn him on. I don't believe Lecter's even seen a woman in eight years. And, oh, are you ever his taste, so to speak. I graduated from UVA, Doctor. It is not a charm school. Good, then you should be able to remember the rules. Do not touch the glass. Do not approach the glass. You pass him nothing but soft paper. No pencils or pens. No staples or paper clips in his paper. Use the sliding food carrier. No exceptions. If he attempts to pass you anything, do not accept it. Do you understand me? Yes, I understand, sir. I'm going to show you why we insist on such precautions. On the afternoon of July 8, 1981, he complained of chest pains and was taken to the dispensary. His mouthpiece and restraints were removed for an EKG. When the nurse leaned over him, he did this to her. The doctors managed to reset her jaw, more or less, save one of her eyes. His pulse never got above 85, even when he ate her tongue. I keep him in here. Dr. Chilton. If Lecter feels that you're his enemy, then, um, well, maybe we'll have more luck if I go in by myself. What do you think? You might have suggested this in my office and saved me the time. Yes, sir. Then I, I would have missed the pleasure of your company, sir. When she's finished, bring her out. Don't get near the glass. Yes, you did, Clarice Starling. Mm-hmm. Nice to meet you, Clarice. You can hang your coat up there if you like. Oh, thank you, I will. He's past the others. The last cell you keep to the right. I put out a chair for you. Oh, yes, that's very good, thank you. I'll be watching. You'll do fine. Dr. Lecter, my name is Clarice Starling. May I speak with you? You're one of Jack Crawford's, aren't you? I am, yes. May I see your credentials? Certainly.
Closer, please. Closer. That expires in one week. You're not real FBI, are you? I'm still in training at the academy. Jack Crawford sent a trainee to me. Yes, I'm a student. I'm here to learn from you. Maybe you can decide for yourself whether or not I'm qualified enough to do that. Mm -hmm. That is rather slippery of you, Agent Starling. Sit, please. Now then, tell me, what did Miggs say to you? Multiple Miggs in the next cell. He hissed at you. What did he say? He said, I can smell your cunt. I see. I myself cannot. You use FR skin cream. And sometimes you wear all that at all. But not today. Did you do all these wrongs, Doctor? Ah. That is the Duomo seen from the Belvedere. You know, Florence? All that detail just from memory, sir? Memory agent starting is what I have instead of a view. Well, perhaps you'd care to lend us your view on this questionnaire, sir. Oh, no, 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 no. You were doing fine. You had been courteous and receptive to courtesy. You had established trust with the embarrassing truth about Migs. And now this ham-handed segue into your questionnaire, it won't do. I'm only asking you to look at this, Doctor. Either you will or you won't. Yeah. Jack Crawford must be very busy indeed if he is recruiting help from the student body. Busy hunting that new one, Buffalo Bill. What a naughty boy he is. Do you know why he's called Buffalo Bill? Please tell me. The newspapers won't say. Well, it started as a bad joke in Kansas City homicide, and they said... This one likes to skin his humps. Why do you think he removes their skins, Agent Starling? Throw me with your acumen. It excites him. Most serial killers keep some sort of trophies from their victims. I didn't. No. No, you ate yours. You send that through now. Agent Starling, you think you can dissect me with this blunt little tool? No. I, I, I thought that your knowledge... You're so ambitious, aren't you? Do you know what you look like to me with your good bag and your cheap shoes? You look like a rube. A well-scrubbed, hustling rube with a little taste. Good nutrition's given you some length of bone, but you're not more than one generation from poor wire trash, are you, Agent Starling? And that accent you've tried so desperately to shed, pure West Virginia. What is your father to you? Is he a coal miner? Does he stink of the land? You know how quickly the boys found you. All those tedious, sticky fumblings in the back seats of cars while you could only dream of getting out, getting anywhere, getting all the way to the end. See a lot, Doctor. But are you strong enough to point that high powered perception at yourself? What about it? Why don't you why don't you look at yourself and write down what you see? Maybe you're afraid to. A 
census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. You fly back to school now, little starling. Unspeakably ugly to me. Then do this test for me. No, but I will make you happy. I'll give you a chance for what you love most. And what is that, Doc? Advancement, of course. Listen carefully. Look deep within yourself, Clary Starling. Go seek out Miss Moffat, an old patient of mine. M O F E T. Go Doctor. now. I don't think Mix could manage again quite so soon, even though he is crazy. Go now! Starling. Johnson, good job. Good entry, good command. Starling, where's your danger area? In the corner, sir. Did you check the corner? No, sir. That's the reason you're dead. 3109. Breaking doors or windows to enter or exit. Uh, rule 404. Starling? Sir? Miggs is dead. Dead? How? The orderly heard Lecter whispering to him all afternoon, and Miggs crying. They found him at bed check. He'd swallowed his own tongue. Starling? Yeah, I'm, I'm still here, sir. I just... I don't know how to feel about this. You don't have to feel any way about it. Lecter did it to amuse himself. I know it got ugly today, but he mentioned a name at the end, uh, Moffat. Any follow-up on her? Uh, well, Lecter altered or destroyed most of his patients' histories prior to capture, so there's no record of anyone named Moffat. But um, I thought the yourself reference was uh, too hokey for Lecter, so I figured he's from Baltimore, and I looked in the phone book, and there's a yourself storage facility right outside of downtown Baltimore, sir. Unit 35 was leased for 10 years, prepaid in full. The contract is in the name of a Miss Hester Moffat. So nobody's been in here since 1980? Not to my knowledge. Privacy is a great concern to my customers. Uh, yes, I won't disturb anything, I promise. 
I'll be out of here before you know it. I hope you Yes, actually, I can't. <laughs> to return tomorrow with my son. What about him? I would ask my driver to help you, but he detests physical labor. All right. Well, you just stay here. I'll be back in one minute. Oh, um, if this door should fall down or <laughs> anything else, uh, this is the number for our Baltimore field office. Now, they know that you're with me. You call them if anything should happen. Yes, Miss. Hester Moffat. It's an anagram, isn't it, Doctor? Hester Moffat. The rest of me. Miss, the rest of me? Meaning that you rented that garage? Thank you. Your bleeding has stopped. 
Sergiu. It's nothing. It's just a scratch. Dr. Lecter, whose head is in that bottle? Why don't you ask me about Buffalo Bill? Well, do you know something about him? I might if I saw the case file. You could get that for me. Why don't we talk about Miss Moffat? You wanted me to find him. His real name is Benjamin Raspell, a former patient of mine whose romantic attachments ran to, shall we say, the exotic. I did not kill him, I assure you, merely tucked him away very much as I found him after he'd missed three appointments. But if you didn't kill him, then who did, sir? Who can say? Best thing for him, really. His therapy was going nowhere. His dress, uh, makeup. Raspo was a transvestite? In life? Oh, no. Garden variety manic depressive. Tedious, very tedious. No, no, just think of him as a kind of experiment. A fledgling killer's first effort at transformation. How did you feel when you saw him, Clarice? Scared at first, then. Exhilarated. Jack Crawford is helping your career, isn't he? Apparently, he likes you, and you like him, too. I never thought about it. Do you think Jack Crawford wants you sexually? True, he is much older, but do you think he visualizes scenarios, exchanges, fucking you? That doesn't interest me, Doctor. Frankly, it's, it's the sort of thing that Miggs would say. Not anymore. Thank you, Barney. What happened to your drawings? Punishment, you see, for Migs. Just like that gospel program. When you leave, they'll turn the volume way up. Dr. Chilton does enjoy his petty torment. Did you mean by transformation, Doctor? I've been in this room for eight years now, Clarice. And I know they will never, ever let me out while I'm alive. What I want is a view. I want a window where I can see a tree or even water. I want to be in a federal institution far away from Dr. Chilton. What did you mean by fledgling killer? Are you saying that he's killed again? I'm offering you a psychological profile of the Buffalo Bill based on the case evidence. I'll help you catch him, Clary. You know who he is, don't you? Tell me who decapitated your patient, Doctor. All good things to those who wait. I've waited, Clarice, but how long can you and old Jackie boy wait? Our little Billy must already be searching for that next special lady.
Can I help you with that? Would you? Sure. Thank you. That's all right. You look kind of handicapped. Yeah. I got it this far. I just can't get it up in the truck. So, here, scan this. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you can set it down. That's good. Uh, get in the truck, and I want to push it all the way up to I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, push it all the way there. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, that's great. Okay. Hey, see, are you about a size 14? Sorry. Outside. Let's go. Sandy, in the ring for Starling. Let's go. Saddle up. Pack your field gear. You're moving out. You're going with Profit. Where? Found a girl's body down in West Virginia. Been in the water about a week. Looks like a Buffalo Bill type situation. Keeps them alive for three days. We don't know why. There's no evidence of rape or physical abuse prior to death. All the mutilation you see there is post-mortem. Okay, three days. Then he shoots them, skins them, and dumps them. Each body in a different river. The water leaves us no trace evidence of any kind. That's Frederica Bimmel, the first one. Her body was the only one he took the trouble to weight down, so actually she was the third girl found. After her, he got lazy. Okay, let's see. Circles where the girls were abducted, arrows where their bodies were found. This new one today washed up here, Elk River, West Virginia. Adam Starling, tell me what you see. Oh, he's a white male. Uh, serial killers tend to hunt within their own ethnic groups. Um, he's not a drifter. He's got his own house somewhere, not an apartment. Why? What he does with them takes privacy. He's in his 30s or 40s. He's got real physical strength, combined with an older man's uh, self-control. He's, he's cautious, precise. He's never impulsive. He'll never stop. Why not? He's got a real taste for it now. He's getting better at his work. Not bad, Starling. Questions? Yes, sir. Um, you haven't mentioned anything about the information contained in my report or Dr. Lecter's offer, sir. Considering it. That's why you sent me in there, isn't it? To get his help on Buffalo Bill, sir? Well, if that was the case, then I just, I just wish I was in on it, that's all. If I'd sent you in there with an actual agenda, Lecter would have known it instantly. He would have toyed with you, then turned to stone.
Excuse me, Sheriff Perkins. These are the FBI people. Sheriff Perkins, Jack Crawford, FBI. Special Agent Terry, Agent Starling. We appreciate being invited to your jurisdiction. I didn't call you. That was somebody from the state attorney's office. We'll extend you every courtesy, but right now, I... Sheriff, uh, this type of sex crime has certain aspects I just as soon discuss in private. You know what I mean? Dr. Eagles from the chapel. Yes, sir. Starling, we're back here. Tell Lamar to come on when he's finished playing his music. Yeah, we'll be sending him that. I need a six-way link up. Chicago, Detroit. What? What? Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, gentlemen. You officers and gentlemen, listen here now. Uh, there's things we need to do for her. I know that Y'all brought her this far, and that her folks would thank you if they could for your, for your kindness and your sensitivity. And now, please go on now. Let us take care of her. Go on now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. Yeah, that's right. West Virginia. Elk River. Stand by for transmission. Ray? Dr. Lamar, let's take a look at her. Okay, Starling. Bill. Star shape contact entrance wound over the uh, sternum. A uh, muzzle stamp at the top. Wrong for death. Wrong for death. She'll have to go to the state pathologist at Claxton. Well, I, I better get back to that service. Lamar will help you. Lord almighty. 
What else do you see, Sterling? Well, she's not local. Her ears are pierced three times, and there's a, a glitter nail polish. It looks like town to me. Two of her fingernails are broken off, and there's uh, there's dirt or grit under them. It looks like she's tried to claw her way through something. Ray, get pictures of her teeth. We'll fax them for missing persons. Right. Got something in her throat. When a body comes out of the water, lots of times there's like leaves and things in the mouth. What is that? Some kind of seed pod? No, sir. That's a bug cocoon. But there's no way that could get way down in there like that. Not unless somebody shoved it in there. She'll be easier to print when we turn her over. Lamar, will you give me a hand with this? Yes, sir, I will. Oh, Jack. What do you make of these? Sure. Different configuration than the other victims. Get close ups. Victim skin removed, this time in two large diamond shaped sections above the buttocks. Stellate exit wound level with the second or the third thoracic vertebrae, approximately six inches from the right shoulder blade. Starling. When, when I told that sheriff we shouldn't talk in front of a woman, that really burned you, didn't it? It was just smoke, Starling. I had to get rid of him. Matters, Mr. Crawford cops look at you to see how to act matters point taken ligature marks found around the wrists not around the ankles this would indicate that the skin was post-mortem Time coach, my move. No fair, you lured him with produce. Tough nuggies. Still my turn. <laughs> nice and slow, baby. If the beetle moves one of your men, does that still count? Of course it counts. How do you play? Agent Starling? Where the heck did this come from? It's practically mush. It was found behind the soft pallet of a murder victim. The body was in the Elk River in West Virginia. It's Buffalo Bill, isn't it? I'm afraid I can't tell you any more about that. We heard about it on the radio. You mean this is like a clue from a real murder case? Cool. Just ignore him. He's not a PhD. A spingid serotonia, maybe. Boy, he's a big sucker. Okay. Let's check morphology. What do you do when you're not detecting, Agent Starling? Try to be a student, Dr. Pilcher. You ever go out for cheeseburgers and beer? The amusing house wine? Are you hitting on me, Doctor? Yes. Gotcha. What do you got, Rodin? Agent Starling, meet Mr. Acherontius Styx. Weird. Better known to his friends as the Death's Head Moth. Now, where does it come from? God, that's what's strange. They only live in Asia. Asia? In this country, they'd have to be specially raised from imported eggs. Uh, somebody grew this guy. Fed him honey and nightshade. Kept him warm. Somebody loved him.
I'm Donna Faruqi. I'm Gene Castle with Sports. And I'm Tim Langhorn. Our top story for this morning. Catherine Martin, the 25-year-old daughter of Senator Ruth Martin, listed first as a missing person, is now believed to have been kidnapped by the serial killer known only as Buffalo Bill. Memphis police sources indicate that the missing girl's blouse has been identified, sliced up the back, and what has become a kind of grim, all-too-familiar calling card. Young Catherine Martin, as we've said, is the only daughter of U.S. Senator Ruth Martin, the Republican junior senator from Tennessee. And while her kidnapping is not at this point considered to be politically motivated, nevertheless, it has stirred the government to its highest levels. Reach for comment on the ski slope of Stowe, Vermont. The president himself said to be, and I quote, intensely concerned. Just moments ago, Senator Martin takes this dramatic personal plea. I'm speaking now to the person who's holding my daughter. Catherine is very gentle and kind. Talk to her and you'll see. You have the power. You are in charge. I know you can feel love and compassion. You have a wonderful chance to show the whole world that you can be merciful as well as strong, that you're big enough to treat Catherine better than the world has treated you. You have that power. Please. My daughter is Catherine. Boy, that's smart. Release her unharmed. Jesus, that's really smart. Anywhere she keeps the repeating country. the name. And I promise she you... She sees Catherine as a person and not just an object. It's harder to tear her up. Please. Release my little girl. What you're doing, Miss Starling, is coming into my hospital to conduct an interview and refusing to share information with me for the third time. Sir, I told you this is just a routine follow-up on the rest of He is my patient. I have rights. I understand that, sir. Look, I am not just some turnkey, Miss Starling. This is the number for the U.S. Attorney's Office. Please, I think you discuss this with him or you let me do my job. You understand? If your profile helps us catch Buffalo Bill in time to save Catherine Martin, the senator promises you a transfer to the VA hospital at Oneida Park, New York, with a view of the woods nearby. Maximum security still applies, of course. You would have reasonable access to books. Best of all, though, one week of the year, you get to leave the hospital and go here. Plum Island. Every day of that week, you may walk on the beach. You may swim in the ocean for up to one hour under SWAT team surveillance, of course. And there you have it. A copy of the Buffalo Bill case file. A copy of the senator's offer. This offer is non-negotiable and final. Catherine Martin dies, you get nothing. Plum Island Animal Disease Research Center. Sounds charming. That's only part of the island. There's very, very nice beach. Terns nest there. There's beautiful... Terns? Hmm. If I help you, Clarice, it will be turns with us, too. Quid pro quo, I tell you things, you tell me things. Not about this case, though, about yourself. Quid pro quo, yes or no? Yes or no, Clarice? Poor little Catherine is waiting. Go, Doctor. What is your worst memory of childhood? Death of my father. Tell me about it and don't lie, or I'll know. He was a town marshal, and one night he surprised two burglars coming out of the back of a drugstore. They shot him. Was he killed outright? No, he was very strong. He lasted more than a month. 
My mother died when I was very young, so... <laughs> my father had become the whole world to me. And uh, when he left me, I had nothing. I was 10 years old. You're very frank, Clarice. I think it would be quite something to know you in private life. Quid pro quo, Doc. So tell me about Miss West Virginia. Was she a large girl? Yes. Big through the hips, Romy? They all were. What else? She had an object deliberately inserted into her throat. Now, that hasn't been made public yet. We don't know what it means. Was it a butterfly? Yes, a moth. Just like the one we found in Benjamin Raspail's head an hour ago. Why does he place them there, Doctor? The significance of the moth is change. Caterpillar into chrysalis or pupa. From thence into beauty. Our belly wants to change, too. There's no correlation in the literature between transsexualism and violence. Transsexuals are very passive. Clever girl. You're so close to the way you're going to catch him. Do you realize that? No. Tell me why. After your father's murder, you were orphaned. What happened next? I don't imagine the answer is on those second-rate shoes, Clarice. I went to live with my mother's cousin and her husband in Montana. They had a ranch. Was it a cattle ranch? Sheep and horses. How long did you live there? Two months. Why so briefly? I ran away. Why, Clarice? Did the rancher make you perform fellatio? Did he sodomize you? No. He was a very decent man. Quid pro quo, doctor. Billy is not a real transsexual, but he thinks he is. He tries to be. He's tried to be a lot of things, I expect. You said that I was very close to the way we would catch him. What did you mean, Doctor? There are three major centers for transsexual surgery. Johns Hopkins, the University of Minnesota, and Columbus Medical Center. I wouldn't be surprised if Billy had applied for sex reassignment at one or all of them and been rejected. On what basis would they reject him? Look for severe childhood disturbances associated with violence. Our Billy wasn't born a criminal, Clarice. He was made one through years of systematic abuse. Billy hates his own identity, you see, and he thinks that makes him a transsexual. But his pathology is a thousand times more savage and more terrifying. It rubs the lotion on its skin. It does this whenever it's told. <gasps> Mr. My family will pay cash. Whatever ransom you're asking for, they'll pay it. It rubs the lotion on its skin, or else it gets the hose again. Yes, you will, precious. You will get the hose. Okay. 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 Mr. If you let me go, I won't. I won't press charges, I promise. See, my mom is a real important woman. I, I guess you already know that. Now it places the lotion in the basket. Please. Please. Oh, my God. Oh, please. Please. It places the lotion in the basket. I want to see my mommy. Please. No. I want to see my mommy. Ah! <laughs>
you're gonna walk on some beach and see the birdies? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I called Senator Ruth Martin. She never heard of any deal with you. They scammed you, Hannibal. Stand outside. And shut the door. There never was a deal with Senator Martin, but there is now. I designed it. Of course, I worked in a few conditions for my own benefit as well. I identified Buffalo Bill by name. And if the girl is found in time, Senator Martin will have you transferred to Brushy Mountain State Prison in Tennessee. Answer me, Hannibal. You answer me now, or by God, you'll never leave this cell. Who is Buffalo Bill? His first name is Lewis. I've told the rest of the senator herself, but only in Tennessee. And I have a few conditions of my own. Clean him up and get him ready to go. Jack, Hannibal Lecter is being transferred to Memphis. Transferred? Did you have a trainee make some sort of phony offer to Lecter in the senator's name? Yeah, I rolled the dice I had to. Well, she's mad as hell, Jack. Paul Krendler's over here from Justice. She's asking him to take over in Memphis. Dr. Lecter, I'm Lieutenant Boyle. This is Sergeant Patrick. Now, we're gonna treat you as good as you treat us. You be a gentleman, you're gonna get three hots to cot. Sir, the sign right here will have us a legal transfer. Here, sir, use mine. Senator Martin, Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Dr. Lecter, I brought an affidavit guaranteeing your new rights. You want to read it before I sign. I won't waste your time or Catherine's time bargaining for petty privileges. Clarice Starling and that awful Jack Crawford have wasted far too much time already. I only pray they haven't doomed the poor girl. Let me help you now, and I will trust you when it is all over. You have my word, Paul. Buffalo Bill's real name is Lewis Friend. I met him just once. He was referred to me in April or May 1980 by my patient, Benjamin Raspell. They were lovers, you see. But Raspell had become very frightened. Apparently, Lewis had murdered a transient and done things with the skin. We need his address and a physical description. Tell me, Senator, did you nurse Catherine yourself? What? Did you breastfeed her? Now, wait a minute. Yes, I did. Toughened your nipples, didn't it? Oh, son of a bitch. Amputate a man's leg and he can still feel it tickling. Tell me, Mom, when your little girl is on the slab, where will it tickle you? Take this thing back to Baltimore. Five for ten, strongly built, about 180 pounds. Hair blonde, eyes pale blue. 
He'd be about 35 now. He said he lived in Philadelphia, but may have lied. That's all I can remember, Mark. But if I think of any more, I will let you know. Oh, and Senator, just one more thing. Love your suit. I can tell you now that in a meeting earlier this evening with Senator Ruth Barton, Dr. Lecter agreed to assist in the investigation of trying to find the abductor of Catherine Martin, Buffalo Bill. How do you feel, sir? Well, it's only through my own unique insight into Lecter's mind that this breakthrough was possible. And Buffalo Bill's real name? Buffalo Bill's real name is now a matter of record with the proper authorities. Can you give us My name is Dr. Frederick How Chilton. How do you spell that? C H. Are you with Dr. Chilton's group? Uh, well, I just saw him outside, sir. Access to Lecter is strictly limited. We've been getting death threats. I understand, sir. Log in and check your weapon. Well, I can't take all the credit for myself. Uh, Senator Martin, Justice Department, people at the FBI, the folks at the Baltimore State Hospital. And now for the hard part, apprehending the suspect. Excuse me, folks, I'm gonna have to catch a flight. Why that up? Explain that. Commander, Pastor Jacobs. Is it true what they're saying? Huh? Some kind of vampire? They don't have a name for it yet. You do know the rules, ma'am? Yes, Lieutenant Boyle. I've questioned him before. Go ahead. Good evening, Clarice. I thought you might like your drawings back, Doctor. Just until you get your view. How very thoughtful. Or did Jack Crawford send you for one last wheedle before you're both booted off the case? No, I came because I wanted to. People will say we're in love. Anthrax Island. That was an especially nice touch, Clarice. Yours? Yes. Yeah. That was good. Pity about poor Catherine, though. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Your anagrams are showing, Doctor. Lewis' friend. <sighs> Iron sulfide, also known as, as fool's gold. Oh, Clarice, your problem is you need to get more fun out of life. You were telling me the truth back in Baltimore, sir. Please continue now. Well, I've read the case files, have you? Everything you need to find him is right there in those pages. And tell me how. First principles, Clarice. Simplicity. Read Marcus Aurelius of each particular thing. Ask, what is it in itself? What is its nature? What does he do, this man you see? No, that is incidental. What is the first and principal thing he does? What needs does he serve by killing? Anger. Um, social acceptance and uh, sexual frustrations. No, he covets. That is his nature. And how do we begin to covet, Clarice? Do we seek out things to covet? Make an effort to answer now. No. We just... No. We begin by coveting what we see every day. Don't you feel eyes moving over your body, Clarice? And don't your eyes seek out the things you want? All right, yes. Now, please tell me how. No. This is your turn to tell me, Clarice. 
You don't have any more vacations to sell. Why did you leave that ranch? Doctor, we don't have any more time for any of this now. But we don't reckon time the same way, do we, Clarice? This is all the time you'll ever have. Later, now please listen to me. We've only got five... No, I will listen now. After your father's murder, you were orphaned. You were 10 years old. You went to live with cousins on the sheep and horse ranch in Montana. And? And one morning, I just ran away. Not just, Clarice. What set you off? You started at what time? Early, still dark. Then something woke you, didn't it? Was it a dream? What was it? I heard a strange noise. What was it? It was... screaming. Some kind of screaming, like a child's voice. What did you do? I went downstairs, outside. I crept up into the barn. I was so scared to look inside, but I had to. What did you see, Clarice? What did you see? Lambs. They were screaming. They were slaughtering the spring lambs? And they were screaming. And you ran away? No. First I tried to free them. I, I opened the gate to their pen, but they wouldn't run. They just stood there, confused. They wouldn't run. But you could, and you did, didn't you? Yes. I took one lamb and I ran away as fast as I could. Where were you going, Clarice? I don't know. I didn't have any food, any water, and it was very cold. Very cold. I thought... I thought if I could save just one, but... He was so heavy. So heavy. I didn't get more than a few miles. And the sheriff's car picked me up. Rancher was so angry, he sent me to live at the Lutheran Orphanage in Postman. I never saw the ranch again. What became of your lamb, Glory? They killed him. You still wake up sometimes, don't you? You wake up in the dark and hear the screaming of the lamb. Do you think if you save poor Catherine, you could make them stop, don't you? You think if Catherine lives, you won't wake up in the dark ever again to that awful screaming of the lambs? I don't know. I don't know. Thank you, Clarice. Thank you. Tell me his name, Doctor. Dr. Chilton, I presume. I think you know each other. Okay. Let's go. It's your turn, Doctor. Out. Tell me his name. Sorry, ma'am, I've got orders. I'd put you on a plane. Come on now. Brave Clarice. Will let me know when those lambs stop screaming, won't you? Tell me his name, Doctor. Clarice! Your case file. Goodbye, Clarice.
Ready when you are, Doc. Just another minute, please. Son of a bitch demanded a second dinner. Lamb chops, extra rare. Well, what he wants for breakfast. Damn thing from the zoo. Good evening, gentlemen. Okay, Doc, grab some flora. Same drill as before, please. Mm hmm Are you when you are, Sergeant Cumbry? when you are, Sergeant Pembroke. What is this shit? Did somebody go up on five? No, nobody went up. Call Pembroke, ask him to tell him. CP, shots fired on five, repeat. Shots fired on five. Sergeant Tate! Holy shit. What the hell? Bitch. Shut up. Bobby, get the vest. Right, Sarge. Brainy, Howard, cover the... Look! It stopped. Seal off a 10-block radius. Give me the SWAT team and an ambulance double quick. We're going up. <laughs>
man pulls. Two officers down. Clear. Lecter's gone, Sarge. Prisoner is missing. Boyle's gun is gone, Sergeant. Repeat, Lecter is missing and armed. He stripped the bed. Might be making a rope, check all windows. Where the fuck is my ambulance? He's alive. Sergeant Tate, he's alive. Get a hold of him where you can feel his hands, son. Talk to him. What do I say? It's Jim Pimmery now. Talk to him, damn it. Lecter is missing and armed. Embry. Embry, can you hear me? He took Boyle's gun. Pimmery got off one round. There's a chance Lecter was hit. Keep breathing in and out. That's it. You're doing a good job. Oh, you, you look real good there. secured. Main stairwell secured. We think he's on two. Uh, we're pretty sure he's somewhere on two, sir. That's all for now. Over. on your head. Activity, but he's post-dictal now. Uh, the vital signs are good. Pressure is 130 over 90. 90. Yeah, that's right, 90. Uh, pulse 84. We got him on lactated ringers running, and uh, and the uh, patient is on 10 liters of oxygen. They found the ambulance in a parking garage at Memphis Airport. The crew was dead. He killed a tourist, too. Got his clothes, 
cash. By now, he could be anywhere. He won't come after me. Oh, really? He won't. I can't explain it. He, he, he would consider that rude. It's over. She's dead. It's not your fault it worked out like this. The thing is that Lecter said everything we need to catch him with is right here in these pages. Only I can't... Dr. Lecter said a lot of things. He's here, Ardelia. Is this Lecter's handwriting? Clarice, doesn't this random scattering of sight seem desperately random? Like the elaboration of a bad liar, Ty Hannibal Lecter. Desperately random? What does he mean? Not random at all, maybe. Like there's some pattern here. Yeah, but there is no pattern or the computers would have nailed it. They're even found in random order. Random because of the one girl. The one he weighed it down. Uh, Frederica Bimmel, uh, from Belvedere, Ohio. First girl taken, third body found. Why? Well, she didn't drift. He weighted her down. What did Lecter say about the first principles? Simplicity. What does this guy do? He covets. How do we first start to covet? We covet what we see every day. God damn, Clarice. You know her. Mr. Bimmel? That's me. Well, I'm Clarice Starling. I'm with the FBI. I sure appreciate you letting me take a look around, Mr. Bimmel. I don't know nothing new to tell you. Police been back here so many times already. Frederica went into Chicago on the bus to see about a job. She left the interview okay. She never come home. Her bedroom's how she left it. Upstairs, door to the left.
making himself a woman's suit, Mr. Crawford, out of real women. And he, and he can sew this guy. He's, he's very skilled. He's a tailor or a dressmaker. Or, that's why they're all so big. He has to keep them alive so he can starve them a while so that he can loosen their Starling. skin and take... Starling, Starling, we know who he is and where he is. We're on our way right now. Where? Calumet City, edge of Chicago. We'll be on the ground in 45 minutes with HRT. Oh, that's... That's great news, sir, but how... Johns Hopkins came up with some names. We fed them into known offenders. Subject's name is Jamie Gum, a.k.a. John Grant. Lecture's description was accurate. He just lied about the name. Listen to this. Customs had some paper on it. They stopped a carton two years ago at LAX. Live caterpillars from Suriname. The addressee was a Jame Gum. Well, Chicago's only 400 miles from here. I'll be there in... No, 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 Starling. There's not enough time. We want him for murder, not kidnapping. I need you to link him to the Bimmel girl before he's indicted. See what you can dredge up in Belvedere. Yes, sir, you bet. I'll do my best. Starling, we wouldn't have found him without you. Nobody's gonna forget that. At least of all me. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Crawford. Miss Crawford? Thanks for the scraps, asshole. Well, I got a better idea. a good job, FBI agent. You get to travel around and stuff. I mean, better places than this. 
Sometimes you do. Freddie was so happy for me when I got this job at the bank. Toaster giveaways and Barry Manilow on the speakers all day. She thought it was such hot shit. What did she know, big dummy? Stacy, did Frederica ever mention a man named uh, Jamie Gum or a Jame Gum? How about John Grant? No. Oh, would she have had a friend that you didn't know about? Or No way. She had a guy I'd have known, believe me. Sewing was her life. Did you two ever work together? Or? Oh, sure. Me and Pam Malavese used to help her do alterations for old Mrs. Littman. Can you give me Mrs. Littman's address? I need to talk to her. Precious? Down here, you sack of shit! <laughs> Give me that bucket. No, you get me a telephone and lower it down here now! The poorly food. Precious? Darling, how are you all right? She's in a lot of pain, mister. She needs a bed. She broke her leg on the way down. I know it. She's been licking Hey, don't head. you hurt my dog! Don't you make me hurt your dog! Hey, you don't know what pain is! Good afternoon. Um, sorry to bother you. I'm, I'm looking for Mrs. Lippman's family. No, Lippman's don't live here anymore. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, I really need to speak with you. Clear! Clear! You know, what's the problem, officer? Well, I'm investigating the death of Frederica Bimmel. There's no one here, Jack. Clarice. Your name is? Oh, uh, Jack Gordon. Mr. Gordon. Good. Um, well, Frederica used to work for Mrs. Lippman. Did you know her? No, uh uh. Oh, wait. Was she a great big fat person? Yeah, she was a big girl, sir. Yeah, I, I miss. No, I, I read about her in the newspaper. Um, Mrs. Lippman had a son, though. Maybe he could help you. I got, I got his card in here someplace. Do you want to come in while I look for it? May I? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Hello, Mrs. Lippman. Are you close to catching somebody, you think? Yes, we may be. Did you take over this place after Mrs. Littman died? Is that right? Yeah, I, I bought this house uh, two years ago. Did she leave any records, any business records, tax forms, uh, lists of employees? 
No, nothing like that at all. Say, has the FBI learned something? The police around here don't seem to have the first clue. I mean, you, you got like a description, fingerprints, anything like that? I'm gonna get you out of there, but right now, you listen to me. I've gotta leave this room. I'll be right back. No! Don't you leave me here, you fucking bitch! No! Don't you leave me here! This guy is fucking crazy! Please! I gotta get out of here! Please. Catherine! The other officers will be here any minute now! Quiet! Oh, God. Oh, God. 
You okay? Gunpowder is nothing. Agent okay. Starling, how did you track Buffalo Bill to this address? <laughs> Clarice M. Starling. Congratulations. Agent Starling. Special Agent Man. Phone call. Excuse me, John. Starling? Hilch, did you take our picture? <laughs> sure. Look, I just wanted to say congratulations. And uh, I'm not much good at this kind of thing, so I'm going to duck out of here. OK, sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Crawford. Father would have been proud today. Don't forget your phone call. Starling. Wow, Clarice. Have the lamb stopped screaming? Doctor Lecter. Don't bother with the trace. I won't be on long enough. Where are you, Doctor Lecter? I have no plans to call on you, Clarice. The world's more interesting with you in it. So you take care now to extend me the same courtesy. You know I can't make that promise. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Bye.